Hi, this is Ömer Faruk Gülban. I am an employee of Brain Innovation, doing research and software development using MRI data. In this work, we are going to build on top of our previous work that is published in 2022, which involved acquiring 0.35 mm isotropic T2 star imaging and T1 imaging at 70 in in vivo humans. However, in this study, we have only covered one third of the brain, mostly aiming at calcarine sulcus and the Heschel's gyrus to cover primary visual and auditory areas. And our whole protocol required in total 120 minutes of scanning time. This scanning time was consisted of 14 minutes of T2 star imaging runs using multi-echo GRE repeated four times to increase our SNR and 10 minutes of T1 weighted imaging using MP2 range and repeated six times to increase our SNR at this mesoscopic 0.35 mm isotropic resolution. Our aim here in this work is to reduce our total scan time while covering the whole brain and we aim to get as high quality images as possible in comparison to our previous work. Below you can see a summary of our previous work where we acquired T1 and T2 star images, look at fine cortical details such as pile vessels, intracortical veins and cortical layers, and where we have developed new methods to analyze the cortical angioarchitecture. Therefore, the end goal of our work here is to have a faster imaging that covers whole brain to eventually study the cortical angio architecture. Our data acquisition consisted of acquiring data at 7 Tesla using 32 channel head coil and in total we had three participants. We had two main contrasts. First one was 3D multi-echo GRE and second one was MP2 rage to get T1 weighted images. In both of these cases our resolution was 0.35 mm isotropic. You can see further details of the acquisition in our previous work. It is important to note that in each acquisition session, we have repeated as many times as possible within a one hour scanning duration, the same coverage that we have planned to scan. And across sessions, we have moved our coverage, as you can see on the right hand side. Although in this visual we show five different coverages, in our experience, nearly the whole brain can be covered with only three slabs. Our first method of reducing our total scan time was increasing our grappa factor from two to three. In one subject, we have acquired the same number of runs and created the same average echo image using grappa 2 and grappa 3 data. Qualitatively, we have concluded that there is no substantial difference between GRAPPA3 versus GRAPPA2. Therefore, we were confident in using GRAPPA3 in our future acquisitions. One note about this figure is that GRAPPA2 looks a bit blurry compared to GRAPPA3 because we have co-registered the GRAPPA2 image here to the GRAPPA3 image. However, we also did the other way around and this didn't change our final judgment. That is, GRAPPA3 looks equivalent or approximately the same as GRAPPA2. Therefore, the benefit of nearly 5 minutes of reduction per run is preferred. Our second method of reducing the scan time was replacing the acquisitions needed to increase our SNR through averaging with denoising methods. For this purpose, we have used nonlinear anisotropic diffusion filtering and applied it on our single run MP2 reg data. Our results show that qualitatively, single run of denoised MP2 reg data is good enough for doing cortical gray matter segmentation compared to three to six runs of averaged MP2 reg data. Therefore, we have decided to only get a single run and denoise it for the rest of the subjects. Related to this part, I am actually excited to see another work that offers very fast T1 imaging at 7 Tesla 
and for that you can see the poster 0885 in this ISMRM from Kenny. In the future we are planning to test the T1234 protocol, compare it with our denoised MP2 rash data. And maybe this might be a way for further time benefits. In this slide we show that slab stitched and denoised T1 weighted images are good enough for doing whole brain gray matter segmentation, which is a critical step for further cortical analysis. Moving to our main contrast of interest, that is the T2 star imaging, here we show the overall image quality in our slab stitched dataset for one subject across different slices. It can be seen that from a bird's eye view, we have good contrast and our images when co-registered seem to be in good alignment and in good agreement with the T1 contrast that comes from the denoised MP2 rage scans. Zooming into the brain, in this figure, we are looking at the fine details of the brain. For instance, after doing minimum intensity projection that is over approximately 3 mm, you can appreciate that in white matter we are capturing many fine vascular details. Looking at the subcortex, we can see subcortical structural aerial boundaries together with mainly fine details of the vessels. And on the cortex, we can see nicely the pile vessels together with intracortical vessels that penetrate to the cortical gray matter. Therefore, currently we are happy with this data set to provide us a ground truth that we can compare further accelerated methods or different acquisition protocols to see how much of these fine details we are losing or preserving. Aside from having our ground truth data and being satisfied with that, I am very excited to tell you that currently we can do at least 10 times faster with regards to whole brain coverage and resolution using highly segmented 3D EPI readout. Merely by acquiring data for 7 minutes, we can get data of approximately equivalent quality to our ground truth data set in 7 minutes instead of nearly 90 minutes of data. Further, looking at the vascular contrast available in these 3D EPI anatomical images acquired at 0.35 mm, we can see similar vascular details available in the T2 star weighted data. And I hope to update you in the future with regards to this development. Thank you for listening.